You get hit with a hurricane and about an average of three years. Here's a statistic, statistic that probably you don't know. 100% of the Gulf forming storms that form in the Gulf, these are the pop ups. Hurricane Ike, we, we watched it as, as it was a dust cloud coming off Africa. I was in East Texas checking on people, right here near this community, checking on people that were displaced from Hurricane Gustav. And I, I remember the state operations center calling me and said, hey, there's a dust spot coming off of Africa and you need to head home. What? Come on, really? That was about 12 days. And the forecast, original forecast was up the eastern seaboard. And went to Brownsville, and went to Corpus, and went to Missouri County, and then finally went to Galveston. And if it didn't make that last right turn that it made just before it hit Galveston, about 75 miles offshore, it would have been a different story for Galveston. It would have been 100% ugly. <laughs> and that was in 2008. I, I use this video because in Texas, we have a bad case of amnesia. People get amnesia of these storms, and they forget about these storms. They forget what they went through. <coughs> you know, I, I was amazed watching Hurricane Sandy and those people trying to charge their cell phones. Who were they talking to? There were no cell towers. And People ask, and, and I've, I've had folks ask me, <laughs> politicians from Washington ask me, they said, what made Galveston so successful in 2008? I said, because we keep it simple. And we have a lot of experience. And look at our experience. In 1900, 6,000 people died. 6,000 people died in 1900. One of the most successful responses. Now, granted, there were 6,000 people that died, but why was the recovery after the 1900 storm so successful? Well, the reason is because of what, like what you're doing tonight, it was community. It was community coming together and rebuilding Galveston. Ike was the same way. The other problem that we have is, is what's the difference between a Category 1 and a Category 5 hurricane? As far as I'm concerned, nothing. A hurricane is a hurricane. When do we classify tornadoes? We don't classify them as they're coming. We wait till after the storm, two or three days later. And then we decide, hey, it was an EF6 or 3 or 2 or 0, whatever it was, then we classify it. But as far as hurricanes goes, we should get rid of the classifications now. Either they're dangerous, they're major, or they're catastrophic. This is my office. It's a Category 5 building. The vendor says the roof won't come off in 155 mile an hour winds. I'm dying to call and go, hey, dude, you were wrong. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll never have to make that phone call. Category 5 building, and my office is where those windows are, and that's 33 feet above sea level. The bottom floor, and yeah, it looks like a big beach house. That building is 20 miles off the coast of Galveston. The bottom floor is designed to wash away. So I asked our county judges, well, what do we do after it washes away? I don't know. I hunker down? Because we're, we're here for the long haul. And he's right. And I made this easy. So next one. This is the... This is, this is what goes into your hurricane response. This is the San Antonio staging area. So when you hear of commodities, food, ice, water, and stuff that comes, I know it's hard to see, but in the upper left-hand corner, there's a picture of a gentleman with a ball cap on it and a, and a shirt. That gentleman is the mayor of Port Isabel, Texas. And, what's he, and what he's doing is he's doing the right thing for his community. Because in Texas, there's three people that are in charge of emergency management. It's real simple. It's the mayor, the county judges, and there's 254 of those, and the governor. That's it. Those are the folks that are in charge. Fire chief and police chief, hey, we work for them. Emergency manager, we work for them. So that's the amount, those are the resources that go into, that, those are the resources that go into the hurricane response. When I call for an evacuation, or my judge calls for an evacuation of Galveston Island, that's an automatic $31 million check you just signed. And that's loss of commerce. That's the resources needed to do the evacuation and the response that goes into it. That's a lot of money. Next slide. This is a great picture. This is when Austin thought I had totally lost my mind. I had called Austin and I, and I talked to Austin and I said, headquarters, I said, we need cowboys. They said, dude, you have way been on this hurricane way too long. You've got to go home and get some sleep. This is Texas, son. We don't need cowboys. No, really, we need cow cowboys. 